Hello, hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today I want to talk about specifically, I guess, this comment that was brought up on the Reddit, and we're going to be reading this, and also the, uh, the, the pinned comment down below. And it's about specifically some of this quality of life changes that have been coming to the NA side of the game and some of the, I guess, reactions around it. I thought it was interesting enough to talk about, so I wanted to talk about it. So I'm going to be reading this, and then I'm also going to be reading the pin comment, because apparently this has been a little bit contentious. I just woke up, so <laughs> from nine hours ago. This is supposed to nine hours ago, so I'm sure plenty of stuff has kind of been going around, but I'm going to start reading it right here. Uh, thank you for Professor Stein for the other uh, comment that's going to be dead. Red and all for their comments because it's very important that we kind of get the stuff that we get to hear from the devs. Because um, hearing from gacha devs is usually pretty tough. They're not really forthcoming, especially for Go, who doesn't really like to talk. They like to do live streams, but they don't really like to talk. But anyway... I was somewhat recently at a big convention where the Fago team did a big panel talking about the upcoming content and other such things. The recent changes happening with NA, bumping with our clairvoyance down essentially, are very intentional and we were directly asked to give live feedback and suggestions, many of which are now being implemented in the game. These panels are usually very read between the lines, but this one was incredibly blunt. I've been to a bunch of these over the years and... Uh, this one had a lot of very fed up energy. First major point I want to make is that NA is very sick of JP players that act out on Twitter and on other social media outlets. Descriptions of their behavior were uh, much more honest and to the point rather than implied behaviors. We were directly told that the members of any Plex staff have received death threats over NA getting unique content, especially the Caldea breakdown content caused JP players to go, to go absolutely ape and start sending them threats or disgusting, often racist messages. This seems to have been a hit, a boiling point that actually got in some people to charge to realize we need to stop encouraging or tolerating these people, and it was stressed to us that NA will get more exclusive content, not less. Um, let's move to the next point. Second point, we were told directly NA story progression is dog shit. It's really bad. An enormous amount of people have not started part two. It was made clear that this isn't a financial issue. NA still makes absolute bank enough that it's gotten more team members, not less. But they need to and want to just get more people through the story. They directly asked us to speak on what would make us progress, what we felt caused people not to progress, etc. Many people spoke about the desire not to be AP gated and that it was really bad to get to the cliffhanger and then be out of AP. The team suggested fixes for this would almost certainly be coming in the form of maybe more golden fruit being given out, custom master missions being used as an example of how those might be given out, and more aggressive reductions of AP for cost of story as well. Biggest thing was, generally speaking, NA has a lot of more levers to pull right now. The overall implication of this was that the Lightworks exiting, uh, exiting the project, uh, project, the status quo of NA follows the JP schedule as closely as possible, is not going to necessarily be a thing. They did tell us that overall release dates for story and events is locked. They will not ever accelerate that, but reward structures, custom content, campaigns, missions are on the table for change. The biggest feeling I got watching it was... Uh, fuck JP if their user base is going to act badly, we might as well make shit happen instead of sitting on it. Uh... The... Ooh, my alarm went off because I was supposed to be asleep. The talk was overall very positive. It was a breath of fresh air, really. It was very clear to most people to speak in the room that this was a f clear change of policy approaching NA as a whole. And very much empowered NA team. I hope this makes shed some light on the recent decisions because as someone who has been watching since the event and seeing these changes slowly come into vision, it's 100% in line with what was said in the event. They know things need to change and are finally being given out a little more space to make those changes and less argue uh, for them to be made. Edit, as mods have said, you should uh, always be wary of claims on the internet. I am relying on my personal experience and interpretation, nothing more. I definitely do not speak for the NA team or intend to do so. I can tell you I'm generally all day long. It's been up to you to make an informed decision on if you believe or not, but ultimately it's just a post about a silly phone game we all enjoy. I'm going to sleep, happy farming. And now for the comment below, because it's also from someone who was at the convention. For whatever my reputation is worth, as a member of this community, I was at the convention and the panel in question. In fact, I was literally in the front row. I think other people were nervous to sit right up until someone else did. It was basically empty until I got there, even though a lot of people entered the room before me, so they turned out well for me. 
uh, great things, a uh, great view of things. I think I also mentioned in my comic around what happened, but alas, nobody actually came up and talked to me. Most of the panel was essentially a Q&A focus on the audience. To me, it felt like Albert in particular was trying to really talk with the community and get some information and a better understanding of where people were, why they were doing certain things in games and so on. They definitely want people to progress in the story. There were quite a few hand raised questions, who's beaten part one and who's finally caught up, who has both JP and NA accounts and so on. And then sometimes specific questions for people who are in particular situations. I didn't personally get the impression of JP acting out too much, but I think the staff are willing to consider adjustments and changes that require minimal code rewriting and editing for technical reasons. They're limited They're limited in what they can do with that, but any idea that they can be done with existing systems will probably be taken far more seriously. That is frankly less about the JP thinks and more about trying to run the game well in uh, in C, adjusting to the unique situation of the NA servers, players, habits, etc. They know that there are some issues, like it being hard to raise new servants if you haven't progressed, so the lack of stronger servers makes it harder to progress, and so on. Incidentally, they also said that they really like giveaway. They don't really like giveaways because people then expect them all the time. Duh. But they're uh, much more open to things being earned as a result of playing the game. So solutions that can be done by playing, not handouts, are more likely. Personally, I think higher rewards for cleaning story content would be an excellent motivator. I agree. I think I remember someone in the audience saying that the rewards for beating a long story chapter was more story. That's not entirely bad if you're like me and really enjoy the story, but for some, some time spent, it can feel like you're not getting much. Okay, so uh, here's the main thing about here. I think a lot of people are going to focus on the JP side of what it is, and we don't know exactly how in general because no one was there. I wasn't there. I don't know. From what I know is that, and from what I can remember of this game specifically, is that I feel like a lot of the times people feel like the JP side of gotcha games is quiet, and they don't complain like, the English side and what I always have held the belief in is is that that's not true we just don't know Japanese so we don't know what they're saying <laughs> and the Fogo fan base has been it's not always the I it's very big it's very huge so there's always gonna be pockets of it that are bad if you want a specific example of the JP fan base acting out and being absolutely shit people you can always look to the Pravati situation where they bullied that artist to just straight up fucking quit art over a fucking drawing that was good. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense of why they were doing it. And it's the most insane thing in the world. And I think, I don't think they actually quit, but I think they're basically off of social media in general. They did occasional art from here and there. I think whenever they do Pravati stuff, they usually bring them in, but I digress. But it's too much of the focus on this. If it is true that they're dealing with a lot of this stuff, then that sucks. I don't. I think it's pretty obvious that in any capacity you're going to be dealing with this because it's the internet. To what extent, I don't know, and how bad it is, I don't know. It's just something that I can't speculate. On the second point, though, about the actual progression of the game, I think it's pretty clear that they have been moving stuff up in a way that's interesting. Um... Our clairvoyancy, which is our ability to see into the future, has been hit dinged many times, actually, not just this year, but in general. The biggest one for me is, of course, actually getting the summer rerun, because up until this point, they've always had the summer rerun after anniversary. This is the first time in the game's history on NA that summer is not coming after the anniversary. Um, funny enough, that's following the JP schedule of things. But it is at least a sign of like, hey, we're not going to be following things 100% the way you want, the the way you expect. And we've also gotten that this year. We got a Raikou banner that came out of nowhere that no one was prepared for. And uh, a decent number of people summoned because they're like, well, shit, I didn't think that Raikou was coming this <laughs> this year. She wasn't on the schedule. So I think it's obvious that they're going to be kind of doing more of that kind of stuff going forward. Uh, I think some of the big stuff, like, uh, I really do think that Pity is not going to be moved forward. If Pity gets moved forward, that's crazy. If, if Pity comes and it's anniversary, basically, here's my thing. If we get Pity at anniversary, that's your best chance. If it's not there, then you have to wait a year. That's what I'm going to say right now, because that would be absolutely the craziest thing to be moved forward. Um... 
I doubt it, though. That's just something I'm speculating on at the moment. In terms of the actual progression of the game, yeah, going for the story kind of sucks. Because the... And they've known this on JP, too, which is why they eventually added items to make it um, easier. Uh, like that item that lets you revive for free. Um, I don't think we have that over here yet. And we might be getting it for the anniversary, I can't remember. But in general, it kind of just kind of sucks to go through the story. Um... You kind of have to set up your own time, and you kind of have to feel like I... Ha and because the story is as good as it is, and you want to focus on it, and you have to actually kind of care about it, um, you have to very be in the mindset of, I don't want to do anything else, I just need to focus on this. So it can be um, extremely annoying to go through the story at times, even if the story is good and it's fantastic. And that's speaking as someone who usually waits to go for the story just because I don't really feel the need to go through it right away because of whatever reason. Because there really isn't much besides the fact that um, sometimes they gate events based off a story, <laughs> which is the main reason I do it a lot of the times. And I enjoy the story and I love the story and I love a lot of the aspects of it, but uh, to actually go through and do it, it's a little bit of a different story. It's a, it's a huge uh, monumental task, so it makes sense if they're trying to better that in some ways. Um, and in terms of the other stuff that they may be doing, like, more campaigns, that makes sense. If we're going to be getting more, um, NA-specific contents of stuff, it'd be very interesting. Um, my big one, especially for this year, because like I said, as I've gone through the year, the, very, the year is very light near the end of it. And that's because that's when, uh, COVID hit. And when COVID hit, it kind of ruined a lot of schedules. Um... So if they could maybe fix some of the thing, Honestly, I would prefer it if NA was the best version, even if it was on a two-year delay. Like I, like they said, like the big story things, they can't change that. But that's because the Fago story is very specific that it, at this time, it happened at this day. It has to be that way. So I don't really care if that stuff gets moved up to a crazy amount, as long as it's around the right area and stuff. But I don't want like a full version. Like I think in, was it the... Chi Taiwanese version or the Chinese version one of the two of the versions one of the other versions of Fago because there's many of them um, they did like uh, two like they caught up in the span of a year which is insane and is not in any way possible or that it would that speed is too quick so I kind of like the speed that we're on um, so if only the quality of life stuff kind of goes forward I'd be okay with that um the story stuff can stay where it is because it needs to be there, in essence, is what I'm saying. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what NA has in store. The anniversary is going to be coming up in a month. I'm going to be very interested to see what's going to be coming up in NA at that time. And in terms of some stuff that would actually get me motivated to do the story, give me a four ticket at the end. Because that's what they, they did in the past, is that they would give you a three that was at least story limited to the event. And now they just kind of give you a CE that you don't use, <laughs> ever. I have never once, the, the CEs are good to make you go, oh, and make you sad, but that's it. They don't actually have a function in the game, so there's actually really no reason. <laughs> that's not much of a reward if I'm being 100% honest with you. If they gave you, like, a limited that was from the event, like, for example, Lost Belt 6, there's plenty of uh, limited 4s. They don't have to be 5s, but there's plenty of 4s they can give you. Um, or maybe even more SQ, like, give me more of those at the end, something like that. Um, there's plenty that you can do. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. I just kind of want to talk about it. Thank you very much for Professor Stein and for Rednall for giving the insights from this specific panel. I'm sure that there's been a lot of discussion about this that I haven't seen because I literally just woke up and looked at it, and from what I could see from some of my Fago friends... Uh, Gutsu, for example, a good friend of mine, he's the one that said, hey, maybe you want to talk about this, and he gave it to me in my DMs, and right when I woke up, I saw it, and I decided to talk about it, so very interesting stuff. Um, can't wait to see what's going on in NA, as someone who plays NA, who absolutely enjoys playing it, can't wait to kind of see it, and if, again, this stuff, I do believe, happens, to what extent, I don't know, and I, can't, I don't want to speculate, and I don't really want to attack an entire fan base based off of what I've seen here, because I'm sure plenty of them are more angry at. It comes from a place of, why aren't we getting it? And they're right. They should get stuff like this, to be honest. But, you know, they come, they didn't do anything for years. 
I don't know. Maybe with a lasagna, maybe things will change over there. But they also have exclusive stuff that like, they get. They like they get live streams to actually celebrate stuff coming out, and we get stuff that's a little bit different. Like it's not a hundred percent one to one. Our our differences are are varied on what they do. But they also get like panels and stuff like that that we don't get because we can't get them. <laughs> we, we don't. I would love it if Albert came out if we had this huge huge production thing and they talked. But that's not what we get. We get video diaries and we get things that are very practical and make sense for us. And I think that works out a whole bunch. And I think it's very good. It's two different kind of sides of the same coin of whatever. And as someone who's gone come from Dokkan where the JP and global sides of the games are very uh neck and neck at each other where the global side gets more incentives because that's what the people on that side of the game want and the jp ones don't really get those it's like well you're right we should all get that but for whatever reason on the Jap japan side they don't get it so hey but that's the end of the video everyone thank you very much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one you guys have a good day I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. There you go. That's <laughs> I forgot to mention that at the beginning. I just woke up. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>